So in the process of making the manual pump controls, it, basically the pop-up that we're going to use for this. So this is the pop-up that we're going to use for the pump one, pump two, pump three. Now I was just going to go ahead and make those, but I figured this is the prime time where I'm adding an element to this. Now all I did was copy and paste, right? So um, our basically duplicate one of these and then just renamed it and resized a couple things so that I have a start stop button. And I also have a speed command. Now in the, in the instance of what we're trying to do is this is the perfect time to show you an active X command. Okay, so what I wanna do is go up to the top and go to objects and then I'm going to go to active X. And then first I'm going to draw it out, right? So I basically am just going to draw this out right here and then I'm going to select the, I'm going to insert the ActiveX that I'm going to be using. Now, you have to, I will say this, we're gonna do a numeric display, so I'm gonna scroll down to numeric display. Okay, so numeric display control for RS View 32. Now that is the general one that you would like to use. Again, that's the most compact, that's the most, th it's the easiest to use, and it is the one that is most frequently used, I should say. So, um, and, and again, but ActiveX, have to, they have to be actually installed. So not all ActiveX come on the computer. So, and what I mean by that is not all ActiveX come with the, um, the software install, right? So you, you can go to Rockwell, the Rockwell site and get that actual ActiveX if it does not actually have it you know when you install the software now sometimes they do actually prompt that but this sometimes is an actual add-on too so um with that said i already have the add-on so i'm just going to add it in here and you don't have to do that you can do a general display if you want to but then it's going to pop up this screen over here and the title of this we'll call this pump one uh, manual speed Okay, so then as far as units, we're, we're gonna just gonna put, you know, the, the units that we're running. Uh, you can put units if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it like it is. Uh, zero to 100 is generally what you wanna have it as. as a, and as far as appearance, if you wanna have a decimal, you can have a decimal. This is where you select your decimal. Um, in our instance, we're not gonna have a decimal because it's generally, look, we're just running either 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, or whatever the case may be. But in the case you want a decimal, you would come in here and that's where you would add your decimal point, right? I've showed that in, in like some of my YouTube videos, you know, if you've ever wanted to actually see the way that was done. But again, it's really, really, really simple to do. Um, so we're gonna keep this as uh, right here, default stuff, colors, that's perfectly fine. Uh, this is the about, this is, you know, the, the one I have. It's a really, really, really old um, RSV32. Uh, generally, like I said, that's, that's one of the ones that's more prominently used. So if you're gonna see that in the field, that's something you're gonna see. Now the next part is the connection. What we're gonna worry about here is we're going to worry about the actual connection. So the value, we're not gonna necessarily worry about in the minimum and maximum. You can put the, all these variables in here if you want to and control all this stuff. We're just gonna do the basic functions. Now. I have added some controls to this, so I want to go ahead and select the tags that I'm going to use. And I'm going to call this, this is the actual speed control. So what I've done is I've actually went into the program, and I'll show you this. I went into the PLC program, and in the controls is I went ahead and in my MAJ, I've added the, we, we had a default speed in there when we first did the, the controls, but then I added a, a simple tag, which is basically a dent. I just opened up and added a dent so that I could actually have the speed command. Now the speed command will be coming, that will come in handy for our recipes and stuff of that nature when we start doing that. So just keep in mind, we will be using the speed command for multiple things. In this instance, we're gonna be using the speed command for just the actual uh, manual controls. So with that said, we'll come back over here and now we'll select our speed command so uh, again, this comes in and this would be the pump one speed command. So that's basically all we need for that. That's gonna come in there just like this. Okay, so that will pop populate. And if you wanted to actually run that, that's exactly the way that would work. 
and it would pop up a actual screen. Now, let's, let me show you how to do that. So what I've done is I actually came in here and added this already to here. I did the natural touch feature that we did. So I did the touch and called the one instance of the manual controls that I did. Again, I was going to go ahead and do this, uh, all the manual controls for the pumps, because again, you've seen me in the past videos make all the custom graphics. So there is no sense in, in repeating that process. So, but I did feel like it was very valuable for you to see the active X. Now I already have the um, controls in here. So we'll populate this. Now, if I want to change the speed, it will populate up here. Now I can come in here and change the speed just like that. And it changes the speed. So it's a nice pop up. It's a good ActiveX pop up. And you can see right here, you can change the minimum maximum. You can change the speed control. Um, you can come in here and put the maximum in there and it will enter in the maximum. So now it's going to run 100. So we'll go back to 10. Now I want to let you know that this, the way I have the controls is if AVO1 and AVO3 are not open, I will not allow the pump to cut on. So even though I do have the command there, it will not turn on for the simple fact of AVO1 is not there and AVO3 is not there. So let's issue a stop and let me show you this. So let me show you the logic behind what I did and I'll come over here and in the premix. So I didn't do that in the mixer control or the, the actual uh, motor controls for the simple fact of we're using the request on. If you follow the request on back, it comes back over here. So what I did is I added the same exact thing we did for the AVO1s. I said manual on, manual off, and then request. Now, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, in the actual controls for the actual pump to cut on, I don't care about the actual timer at all, right? I don't care about the timer. But what I do care about is that the request is on, that it's manually requested, and AVO1 is on and AVO3 is on. Now later on we can put in controls and we can put in populate an alarm in our alarm program. Populate an alarm to actually say you need to turn on AVO1 and AVO, AVO3. So if I were to, uh, we don't have any controls for AVO3 right now, but if I toggle that on and then I turned on AVO, if I turned on AVO1, just like this. And then I turn my pump on. Then I could come over here and turn my pump on. And now my pump would run at 10%. Now if I change the speed, it will not change um, on a servo because of the simple fact of we have to stop and start it. And then it will actually change the speed to 20%. Now, there is a dynamic update if you wanted to dynamically change the, the speed of a servo, but we're not going to get into servo controls that much as far as that goes because, again, we're just going to be running at a set speed. So just to show you that that does work. Now, if I were to turn one of these off, it would shut the pump off immediately because the way we have the controls. So you see the way that works and you see how easily that works. Now, I do, did indicate there, there's a slight problem and I wasn't finished making that graphic, uh, but when it comes down to it, I have this animation set wrong for the visibility that needs to be set for the actual pump on. So uh, this would be the pump running. So this would be the A, uh, the AV, um, this right here, this IP bit. And we'll set this right here. So if it's invisible and the same thing for the stop bit, uh, the stop bit would be that the, um, manual off so we'll just do this and say that the pump is stopped so if the pump is stopped well actually we want to come in here and do the manual button so this is going to be the manual button right here which is going to be the manual off so now if I hit save come over here and refresh that now this will work perfectly so if I start it it will not start but again the start command is valid it's still there see that the start command is still there and as soon as I turn on AVO1 the pump will start so now the, the problem with this <clears throat> is we're not giving it that prime so 
this would be in a instance where the maintenance technician or somebody is testing it of you know for that matter but again this is giving you the prime indication that how it works so when it comes over here you can stop it and then we would start this turn on this and then we'll start that pump now so that's working properly now and you can see easily see how that works and you can easily see how fluent the controls are right now so what I wanted to do is actually give you an indication of this video I wanted to show you how to have an active X as far as your actual um, you know pop-up display here now I, I think that's a lot better implementation so let's actually stop both of these let's stop all of this issue a stop to everything and this is not this is I had to do this in the PLC so let's go into the PLC and turn AVO3 off now I wanted to give you a, a good indication of how to do this before I did all the controls because I could have did a, a numeric display or a numeric input input but the numeric input looks like this um, let's actually do a numeric input real quick uh, let's do a numeric input numeric input like this and the way it looks is a little bit uh, different it, it doesn't it doesn't give you a pop-up it just gives you a natural uh, it just gives it gives you a natural tag so this is let's just tag these real quick to the actual controls and uh, that way to give you an indication of how it works so this would be pump speed pump speed and this would give you this 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 let's just do this real quick so um, I just wanted to show you this so this doesn't give you a pop-up you would have to manually enter it and then hit the enter button for the download now not every panel view is going to have that so this is why the pop-up is more uh, of, a, of a better application it says this is the ActiveX and this is where you get the pop-up and I think it, it looks and feels a lot better when it comes to that and we can actually come in here and, and change this so it's more of an inset so we can do an inset just like that and have it you know it really depends on how you want it to look and feel um, and personally uh, it, it really comes back to how you want it to look and feel maybe a raised inset looks better um, but again that's just a box so I think raised looks a little bit better so that's just a good good indicator of how things are and how things work so hopefully uh, you got a lot out of that video and I just wanted to show you that before I made a bunch of them because again we have all three pumps and I'm gonna go ahead and make all three so you know how the controls are working and you know how the pop-up is working and now you know how to install an ActiveX or how to use an ActiveX command inside of your Factory Talk SE. So hopefully you got a lot out of that video and we'll see you guys on the next one.